The objective today is to explain what the Intel manual says about TSX, SHA, SHA, okay, and then AVX 512. It's nice that everything's on one page here, but this AVX 512 goes on and on with instructions. So let's crush through this easy beginning part, and then we'll get to the tough stuff. And I did Halloween colors because it's about to get crazy, spooky. Intel has SHA-1 stuff, and yet there's collisions, so it's broken. We're not supposed to use SHA-1 anymore, but it's there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about transactional synchronization extensions. Simple questions to start. What does TSX stand for? And our first instruction is X abort. So that's abort and RTM transaction execution. So what is an RTM execution? The next instruction is X acquire. So this is a prefix hint to the beginning of an HLE transaction region. And then we got X release, X begin, X end, and X test. So that's a nifty little cute small set of X instructions all about transactional synchronization extensions. Let's get to the good stuff. I could hardly wait. These SHA extensions provide a set of instructions that target the acceleration of the secure hash algorithm. So there's four of these SHA-1 instructions. I will skip them all, and I'll just jump down to the three 256 ones, because those are the good ones. So SHA-256 MSG-1 means um, we will be performing an intermediate calculation for the next four SHA-256 message D words. Then we can perform a final calculation for the next four SHA-256 message D words. And the last one will be to perform two rounds of SHA-256 operations. So it's interesting how different these are from the SHA-1 ones. And at the time of this video, the detection of collisions from SHA-1 is relatively new, so I wonder how Intel reacted when they had learned about this. I mean, they created special instructions just for it. So let's go with this for a question. What does SHA stand for? And they set it up here. It's a secure hash algorithm. So let's go ahead and get on with our AVX 512 stuff. This comprises a collection of 512-bit SIMD instruction sets to accelerate a diverse range of applications. All right, so we're accelerating here. Uh, AVX 512 instructions provide a wide range of functionality that support programming in 512-bit, 256, and 128-bit uh, vector registers. Okay, so that's easy. It just, it can go below 512 if necessary. And they put plus support for op mask registers and instructions operating on op mask registers. So what are op mask registers? Now the collection of 512-bit SIMD instruction sets in the Intel AVX 512 include new functionality not available in Intel AVX and AVX2 and promoted instructions similar to the equivalent ones in the AVX ones, but with enhancement provided by op mask registers not available to VEX encoded. All right, so they really keep repeating themselves with the AVX stuff. So there's three types of AVX um, extensions, yet we're not going to call the third one AVX3 because that'd be too easy. Intel's going to call it 512 to just hammer home how many bits uh, these instructions can work with. And right here, it just talks about the mixing and max matching of these instructions for purposes that are less than 512, let's say. And I like that they give us an example. So for example, V broadcast F128 into V broadcast uh, F32 by four. So four times 32 is 128. So that instruction looks the same. But I mean, we did find another 15 letter instruction right there. Well, let's go ahead and get on to it. I will try to uh, speed this up the best I can without, uh, well, you know, staying true to the whole purpose of these video series, that is to read the manual. So these are for AVX 512F, and they are not AVX or AVX2 promotions. V align D slash Q is for perform a D word, Q word alignment of two concatenated source vectors. The next one is the replace the V blend VPD PS uh, instructions using op mask as a select control. Next, we can compress packed double precision or single precision elements of a vector. I'll just read the first one of these groupings, but as you can see, they're all relatively uh, the same, just different values. 
um, but this says convert packed double precision floating point elements of a vector to packed unsigned 32-bit integers. So just repeat that with different values, different types, and you got that chunk. We got a lonely expand packed double precision or single precision elements of a vector here. Uh, we got two of these. It says extract a vector from a full length vector. The next two is about perform fix ups to special values. That's interesting. So, what is a fix up regarding instructions such as, and then I wrote it out. You can see the word V fix up, I M M S D, or you could go with S S. All right, these next four is about converting the exponent of the low or convert the Monteza. But look, you're doing a conversions with these four. Here's a lonely insert 128 or 256 bit vector into, full, into a full vector. I don't know even how to read these two to you. Here's two lonely ones together. We got blend D word keyword elements using an op mask. And then we got a broadcast from general purpose register to vector register. That's interesting. Down here, we'll compare packed, signed, and unsigned D words, Q words. Here's another compress. That'd be nice if they put these together. What's the pattern that I'm not seeing? Here we are. There's the other compress one. Well, anyways, here's a, a full permute of two tables. Down here is a expand packed D word, Q word elements of a vector. We have four compute maximums of packed integers. We can down convert Q word elements in a vector to byte elements using truncation. Saturate saturation or unsigned saturation and that goes down for one two three four five times We have four rotate D word Q word stuff. We got two scatter D word Q word elements Another two shift Q words right by constant shift count or you can do it by shift counts in a vector These three are close enough for me to group together. It says perform bitwise NAND you could perform a bitwise uh, ternary logic operation on three vectors or you could perform bitwise and of keyword D word elements boy these instructions just so long aren't they well next up is we can compute the approximates of stuff we can round packed floating point elements um, we can compute more approximate things here there are two multiply instructions we can scatter elements in a vector to memory, or we can shuffle 128-bit lanes of vector with a granular conditional update, apparently. Now we're in an area called AVX512DQ, while up here it was AVX512F. Uh, so um, apparently there's a difference, and these first uh, five is all about converting packed elements of a vector, except that last one is an unsigned 64-bit integer. We have two alien extractions, just kidding, extract a vector from a full-length vector. You could test um, stuff. You can insert 128-bit vectors into a full vector. What are we working with now? 512. There's two convert op mask register to vector things, and there's a convert a vector register to an op mask register, so those were split up by the page. Multiply packed signed 64 bit integer elements of two vectors and store the low 64 bit signed result. And there are these all about performing range on things. And notice the IMM8, I see that a lot in the intrinsics that I had been reading. But now doesn't seem like the time or place to get into that stuff. So I asked the question, are there any AVX 512 instructions that pop out to you? Okay, let's wrap this up. We got double block packed some absolute differences on unsigned bytes. Okay, you know what? Why don't I just read the title of the sections and that's how we'll wrap up. Right here is 512-bit instruction mnemonics in the AVX BW that are not uh, AVX, AVX2 promotions. All right, so we got AVX of 512BW. This one is AVX 512CD. Same words, though, different instructions. Oh, this pops out to me, though. Detect conflicts within a vector. That's interesting. What kind of conflicts are we talking about? Right here in this section is all about op mask instructions. 
So you can add to, do the logical and, do bitwise not, all those types of operators. There's an update E flags thing, unpack, bitwise logical X and O R, so X and OR, and then the logical X OR. Here is the AVX 512 E R. Maybe because using these can risk you visiting the ER, the emergency room. If you don't correctly compute approximates, you can hurt yourself. Just kidding. Well, here's our last one. Yay! Uh, six questions, pretty good. Maybe we get another one here. Uh, this is the mnemonics for the AVX512PF. So sparse prefetch of packed vector with these hints. Okay, let's do that for a question. What is a T0 or a T1 hint? And with that, we can finish this video next time. I'll talk about system instructions.